Hey everyone, welcome to the Others a Podcast. <laughs> I am your host, Steve Penny. I'm laughing because we are recording videos as well in case we want to use them. I think I surprised Rafa very slightly. <laughs> He was looking. Man, you got me, man. He was looking very bored, and immediately as I started talking, he um knew he had to Jesus. put his uh, game face on and smile. <laughs> you should have let that that one slide, man. Now you call me out, <laughs> calling me out. It's Sorry. on video. It's, it's on video. It, it made me laugh, so I had to like I had to address it. Yeah. How you doing, man? Okay. You good? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. We missed a week last week or two weeks ago. We had some scheduling issues. We were both uh, busy boys. So we've been yeah. away for a, a few weeks. We've got a few bits and pieces to talk about. But the track you chose this week to go through was one that I've I've kind of been waiting for. I don't have an awful lot to say about it, but I love listening to this track. This is like perfect for this time of year. This is a real summery, feel-good song. So we are going yeah, back yeah. in time again to 2009, I want to say. Yes, 2009. Wow. And it is Eclipse's I'm Good. Yeah, man. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. Yeah. Now this man, came, man. This awesome, came awesome out track. on the Love. 30th of June 2009, so nearly exactly 15 years ago. Again, making me feel wow. very old. Yeah, man. Damn, 15 years. But for some reason, I thought that this track was for 2008. When I was looking to the data today, I was like, wow, 2009. I mean, only a year of difference, but I don't know. Like, I think because the way Pharrell is dressing on the video, I think is one of the, the last time that we saw Pharrell is still rocking like New era hats, like baseball caps, and huge, uh, super oversized polos, colorful polos. So I think since, like, I, uh, every time I talk, I think about this song, I think about the video, and I thought, like, Pharrell's look, and so always take me back to 2007, 2008, because after that, like, he was, like, wearing, like, super tight jeans, like, Tight t-shirts also started to change a little bit his style. Yeah, I did have I did have a note in but here yeah. about yeah stuff he was wearing. He does have the the BBC and ice cream polo shirts and like you say those really kind of bold colours. There's a I think a, a bright blue one, an orange one, another colour as well. And yeah. I, what I did notice was uh, I think a rarity for Pharrell was again like you mentioned he's wearing a Yankees cap. A, a new era one, I think, which he, yeah. you know, he would do occasionally, but around that time it was BBC ice cream, everything pretty much still. So a surprise not to see him, you know, yeah, rapping yeah. BBC, uh, especially when he's so prominent in this video as well. Yeah, exactly. Because I remember like in the big, uh, I don't know, 2004, 2005, even in the can I have a, like that video, like he's working like um I think he's a Miami Heat. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, a Miami Heat hat. So yeah, like you say, like we will see like Pharrell occasionally rocking some different caps, like from baseball teams or base, uh, basketball teams. But the Yankees had like I was watching the video today, but like, wow, I didn't even remember this. It's, I know he was kind of based in New York around that time. I don't know if he'd moved out to Miami properly yet, um, or he might have done. But the fact they filmed it in LA as well, I would have thought if you're going to rep a city on a hat, you'd, you know, you'd get an LA one, surely. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, but I, I never thought about this, but it might be like, on purpose, like to just to get the demographic. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. Maybe. I'm sure he right? knows what he's doing, and he has a stylist that you know knows what they're doing as well. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Especially when it comes to fashion. Yeah, that I man knows. Yeah. Uh, let's go back a little bit and just go through some of the um, information around the track itself. So, like we say, it came out in June 2009. I think it was June the 30th, from what I've had. 
from Eclipse's third album, uh, Till the Casket Drops. As a single, it didn't do brilliantly. It looked, I think it only got like a US release. Uh, it only made 20, number yeah. 27 on the Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs chart and 14 on the Hot Rap Songs chart. I don't think it got to you know top yeah. 100 on the main Billboard chart, which surprises me slightly because although it's not one of their best tracks, let's say, it's not you know, a, a stereotypical clips track, which tend to be a little bit sort of darker. Yeah. Coming out in June, just ready for the summer, I would have thought this would have uh, been a bit more successful. Yeah, 100%. I remember, like, back in the day, like, thinking, wow, this shouldn't be a hit. And I, I remember pretty, pretty vividly when Pharrell, I think it was in, in the, on the BBC blog. Remember the BBC blog? Like everybody was like was the BBC blog and the Kanye University, yeah, University yeah. or something like that. Like those two blogs for me, like was daily basis. Like every every day, I was reading that stuff. So I remember, like on the BBC blog, was like uh, summer anthems and something like that. And I was like, oh, because I remember the first time that I heard "I'm Good," I was like, oh, okay, it's good. And it was one of those tracks, especially because of the hook. Like you say, he started to get like, yeah. oh, she, I get it. I get it. And all of a sudden, like, you dancing naked around the house <laughs> saying I'm good for, <laughs> for the four walls of your house. So, yeah. And it was, it, and then it surprised me that it wasn't a hit because it, it's really pretty summerish song. Yeah, definitely. And I remember at the time it getting... I think reasonable sort of video plays and, and airplay here and there. So yeah, it is a bit surprising that it didn't it didn't do uh, as well as it seemed to. I'm just trying to think. I don't know how many views it has on YouTube. I'm actually if I try and find it quickly. I think it's five million. Okay, so not that many. I'm just trying to find the screen that uh, yeah I had on yeah five point four million yeah. Which I guess isn't bad, but it's certainly uh, a lot more popular videos. But yeah, yeah, for clips, it's kind of good. <laughs> and it gets on their their old clips Vivo channel, which I imagine probably hasn't been updated in yeah, God knows how long. Vivo is also something that makes me think I'm old. Like nobody do that anymore. Like it doesn't it doesn't need for anything, right? It doesn't matter. What. Yeah, Vivo is certainly of its time and. This is what I kind of, when we look up the, like, the videos to watch and stuff, especially with like clips and stuff like that, a lot of the videos are on old Vivo channels yeah. still that kind of came out around this time, which really surprises me that they haven't moved them across to like their own official channels or they've re, not renamed those channels because that Clips Vivo channel is like an official Clips channel. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't know why they don't rename it to like yeah. the Clips. I guess, or I assume Vivo had control of those accounts yeah, and of as part of their agreement, those videos had to live on those, uh, those channels forever. Perhaps mm. I don't know. Vivo still going, is it? Yeah. I have no idea. All right. Let's do some, uh, real time searching vivo.com. Uh, it does seem to be. Yes. Yeah. No, I just remember back in the day we, when a video was on Vivo, everybody was like, Oh shit. Now, now it's going somewhere. It was like a stamp. Yeah, I think when an artist had like their own Vivo branded channel, that was like a a big thing. Yeah, I think on their website now they still they claim to be the world's uh, leading music video network, which I guess they probably are just from all of the views that they accumulated over the years. Yeah, they have twenty five billion views per month. Wow. Okay. 1.5 billion hours viewed per month, 900,000 plus music videos. They have a section for music artists and Ice Spice is listed on there. So, Dang. you know, not my sort of thing, but I think she's quite modern and quite popular, isn't she? So, <laughs> Damn, okay. So that's what the kids are into. So I guess they're still doing some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good for you, Vivo. I guess that's why those Vivo channels still exist, but the artists don't ever tend to push you to them anymore yeah so what else have we got with this one um in my notes yeah i think like we've already mentioned perfect time for it to be released just in the lead up to the summer and like i mentioned like you know lyrically not one of the clips's 
best songs. Yeah. It sounds very much like one of those tracks where Pharrell or somebody at the record label has said to them, like, you have to have a radio song, you have to have um, a YouTube video, you know, a, a TV friendly video for the summer and to go with the album and stuff like that. Because it's uh, very different to a lot of their their usual stuff. But what I sort of noticed and what I was reading, I think I read it on Genius. Somebody added the comment on there. It does kind of sound like a modern day. It was a good day by Ice Cube. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's one of those kind of like summery feel good songs where they're talking about what's happened in their day and what's happening in their life and. And there's even kind of a reference to it. There is a line in there saying, "Today was a good day. Uh, today is a good day. Ice cubes on my chest." Oh, okay. I think that's a little play on the uh, yeah the song title there, and yeah, one hundred percent. Oh, I never thought about that. That's that's awesome. Because every time, especially because I love the Pharrell ad libs and the hook so much, I always thought about. How I'm Good is like a 2009 version of Beautiful, in some way, just because how Pharrell is all over the track. Oh, and he is all over this track, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would imagine, like, if if he got a uh, Snoop featuring, or or even if it was, like, a Snoop song, like, it could be bigger as a single, but we will never know. Yeah, and one of the notes I made when we talk about Pharrell being all over this is he's not just singing the hook in you know uh, a typical way a hook or a chorus is made. He's singing that repetitive part all the way through the verses as well in the background. Yeah. So you've not just got the instrumentation, but you've got him there in the background singing as well, which is an interesting way to do it. And it could have sounded terrible and could have really messed the track up. Yeah. But personally, I think it works really, really well in this track. Oh, yeah, 100%. Especially because that's why it's one of the reasons is so um, I still feel like, oh, the word miss it, this song, you know, just let it pass. Because I always thought about that song, like hearing on on your car, on your way to, to, to your work or for whatever. And just listen to that, and then it just the song itself, like a terrible obsession, saying, "Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're gonna be good." So, like, man, it's so that's why I love so much this song. Like, it's always put, puts me on a good mood. Yeah, it's one of those ones to listen to, like when you're getting ready for a night out or something. That's that's how I kind of think of it in my brain, especially with the uh, the Pharrell hook as well. Yeah. And and also the instrumentation, like if you if you think about it, the way they 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 do the synths, like it's always going up. Like. So it's always is also something that puts you in a good mood, and it's kind of uplifting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I just noticed in my notes again, we were speaking a minute ago of certain things being dated and of the time, uh, the clips. I think both of them wearing play clothes, wow. which was their brand at the time, or maybe just, I think it was both of them that were kind of invested in it. Yeah. But yes, pl- play clothes. Um, I did have a quick Google search before we started recording wow. to see if it still existed. I think it still does from what I could very quickly see. Some places still sell it. Yeah. But I don't imagine either of them have anything to do with it anymore. Yeah, I think they sold it and just get away you know like what's in there but for a for a minute for uh, i guess a year or two play clothes was like really hot as well oh yeah people were like re- people were like really into that you know it wasn't quite at the bbc level at that time but because clips were wearing it because they were mentioning it in songs that they were doing with pharrell and on their albums and on the mixtapes and stuff like that it did become pretty popular for a little while yeah, exactly. And I remember they, they used to have like some, some good fabrics, like some good, I don't know, designs and stuff. Like it was pretty cool. I vaguely remember, I want to say I maybe owned a couple of t-shirts that I had shipped from the US. I don't think back then you could get play clothes anywhere in the UK. I don't think there was like a distributor or anything at the time. But yeah. I vaguely remember having 
like the a black t-shirt with like the main logo of the person on it and then another one but i can't remember what the what the design was yeah when i saw the video today when i saw the play close uh, like t-shirt like, wow i remember that <laughs> i'm gonna have to do some again some real time uh looking up i'm gonna go to playclothes.com yeah. it doesn't seem to be loading i don't think it exists anymore yeah i think the last time that i that i searched for it i think it was maybe like five years ago and i think they still was setting some t-shirts on what is the name of the website it was a website that used to be also like a kind of network they they do videos and stuff like oh karma loop Remember Karma Loop? Oh, Karma Loop. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I think I, I think it was like five, six years ago. Like I searched it, and they still had some some T-shirts there. Yeah, the Play Clothes website doesn't load, but if you go to a couple of websites, they still seem to. Ah, okay. So I'm looking at a website called Plunder.com, which looks like it's owned by Karma Loop. Oh, okay. Karma Loop are actually mentioned up in the corner, <laughs> um, and they have, and they have some Play Clothes stuff here. Mm. Uh, none of it particularly good looking to be perfectly honest some of it actually quite horrible and then they do have a website which is still yeah at play Clo the website an instagram page i should say which is still at play clothes it still has the logo it still has the odd picture of pusher on there and their last post was 269 weeks ago <laughs> so not very active anymore, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Which is a shame because they did have over 60,000 followers as well. Oh, okay. Nice. But yeah, looking back at their Instagram page, it is like a big throwback. They've got their own uh, Play Clothes app where you can go and order some, yeah, not very good looking hoodies <laughs> and t shirts. Yeah. And yeah, there's some very questionable design choices from whatever year these were all uh yeah uploaded yeah but i i, I kind of like i have a memory that i remember s s like reading somewhere that they sold play codes for other company and i think on the agreement they still have to be like a um the face of the brand, like sometimes like when a collection is coming, like they had to do like promos or something, something like that. But that was like so short of time. Like I think it was like they did like some promotions for the brand, like for like six months after and then we just forgot about it. Yeah. I'm just trying to, as you were talking, I'm trying to sort of Google through some pages and see if I can find some information about it. But no, there's some stuff from 2015 Pusher talking about it. Okay. I don't know if there's anything interesting on here. So in 2015, they were still in charge of play clothes, but I guess it didn't last last sort of much longer than that. Yeah. But yeah, won't be buying any of that anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. Good times though. Yeah, but go on eBay and find some retro ones. Yeah. Can you... Oh, I never never thought about searching like eBay. It must have something. Yeah, I'm for sure. sure there's loads on there. But and it was funny because. I was watching the video like for the second time today. You know, like, oh, this is so colorful for clips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a very like radio friendly song. It's a very TV friendly video. Yeah, it's yeah, lots of colors, very upbeat, very feel good. Yeah, not as much drug talk as usual. You know, they've toned it down a little bit. Yeah, they are smiling the video. Please. Who are these people? <laughs> yeah, buying his enjoying things, their lives, enjoying their lives, man. Yeah. No, yeah, I remember. Like, uh, I think like Pusha and and Malice was like reading the comments, and they were like, "Oh, we have to understand." Like in Hell Had No Fury, we were pissed off. Like we hate everybody. Now we good. Like we like we have. A lot of things to celebrate, like that, that, that time, that era, like is behind us. And everybody, like, nah, fuck that. Like, <laughs> I want, I want you guys like pissed off all the time. New record deal, probably a little bit of money in their pocket. Pharrell producing most of the album. People like Kanye on the album as well. Yeah, like, yeah, living their best lives. Exactly. And I always think because I, I feel like clips is one of the the last 
real rappers that they were real drug dealers, like they were selling drugs and stuff. So I think like the internet, especially like oh, some of us or, or some of the 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 people from hype beast blogs and everything, like the comment se- comment session errors. Uh, I think everybody glorified clips so much because they were still from the street talking about drugs and talk about all that all that stuff and they were also like kind of different because they were hanging with Pharrell and they were doing also clothes they they were like kind of different and i think they were kind of the last ones that done that because after them like i don't know like everybody like we knew that almost Every rapper that came after the era, saying I don't know, gang, from gangster rap or cocaine rap, they were like, "Oh my god, this is fake!" Like this guy were never on the streets. Segues very nicely into um, the Rick Ross remix. Oh yeah, of this track. <laughs> Speaking of people who may or may not have sold drugs and have a, <laughs> oh. a questionable past that they may or may not have lied about, who knows? Nice. There is also a, a remix of this track which I think came out on a mixtape, but there is a video for it as well. There's a very poor quality video <laughs> yeah, on, uh, on YouTube, which looks like yeah, it was just shot in a nightclub one evening, basically. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is back to the videos we've talked about many, many times, the absolute stereotype of a rap video, which is just all of them showing off their chains in a nightclub, lots of booze, lots of attractive women, and... It is like lyrically, it is more like a clips track. It is very drug oh, yeah. reference heavy. And obviously, because it's got Rick Ross on there as well. So it does sound more like a clips track that I would expect. Yeah. And again, I think we mentioned this in one of the other songs. I would be really interested to know, like, which was written first. Because I Ooh. get the feeling that the remix verses that the clips did maybe not the rick ross part but the clips part were perhaps written first and then i would think somebody at the label or pharrell or somebody would would have said to them like come on like this is a really like feel good upbeat kind of beat that will work really well in the summer work really well in a video like can we tone down the lyrics a little bit and make it a bit more radio and tv friendly and they probably then went and redid it perhaps but wanted to keep that you know other version that they had that they put put Rick Ross on and ended up putting out via whatever mixtape it was. Yeah, yeah, it make a lot of sense. But yeah, so I would I would love to uh, know which order that came about. So if anyone out there knows if they've seen it written down anywhere or said by anybody, then please do let us know. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of um, the feel good vibe of the song and the the entertaining vibe of the song, um, again, it's not lyrically not uh, a brilliant clips uh, track. But a few entertaining lines that I picked out that I that make me laugh. <laughs> Swimming through the streets, looking like I'm Shamu. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. I always like that. Cruising on the 22s, got me sitting pretty. You should hear that engine purr here, kitty kitty. <laughs> Again, a good one. And then uh, finally, I'm free, all my dues paid. Them yellow diamonds uh, got the charms like I, like it's minute made. A few uh, a few you know, entertaining lines in there. Yeah, exactly. But bar that, yeah, I think that's about all I had written down for this one. I think, like we say, there's not there's not a lot in there. There's not a lot to try and decipher. It's not a, a very deep song. It is just feel good summer song. Yeah, exactly. And I even think about what you just said about the the record label maybe intervene on how they gonna do the song. It makes me think like how it kind of it kind of is the, the same era that probably NRD was going through the whole thing about like uh, releasing the the first album and scrap it out of because the record label was like no we need like we need some radio song and they put like Rhea in there so i think it's like 2008 2009 right so just to yeah. think about how the the whole time the whole era like they were like they put in songs like i'm good and at the same time nrd was like going through all that stuff and maybe in decisions of to make it like i'm good as a single was also because of the label. Just made me think about how they were really, were they really good or, <laughs> you know, it was just a song. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, I remember an interview with Pusha years ago where he talked about on Lord Willing and he was saying like, at first, there's probably three or four tracks on that album they didn't like. And Pharrell was like, no, no, you have to have those tracks. You have to have club songs, radio songs, 
songs where we can do videos that get you know airplay on tv like you have to have them unfortunately so you know it's kind of tough if you don't like them to get an album out there and to sell sell the record and to get airplay you've got to have a good mixture of tracks on there which i think it's why i think up until very recently pusher always said like he would never perform like when the last time he would always say like if that was on a if he was ever requested to do that in a show he would turn down the show <laughs> not do it. yeah i think i because remember he just, that. He, he just disliked it so much and i guess that's one of the tracks he's you know referencing back to when they first did the album so I think, yeah, the clips are always going to make, you know, they're very specific type of music. Oh, yeah. And I think maybe not so much anymore with them because they're obviously a bit more savvy to the to the music industry. But I'm guessing back then, yeah, sometimes they probably did need a, a nudge in the right direction to make sure that there was the right, the right level of, you know, real proper hip hop, but also something that could get on the radio if you needed to or, you know, something that could be turned into a single if you needed to promote the album in some way. Yeah, 100%. Especially because uh, I would imagine that a lot of people get to know, like, they discover the clips through Justin Timberlake. That is a totally different fan base, you know? So, of course, like, you have to, like, balance things a little bit. That's something, we've not talked about it before, but that's something I always found interesting, like, back in the day. Like, they were these hardcore rappers, hardcore, I'm putting in air quotes, yeah, real. They came from the streets, actual drug dealers. That's where they made a lot of their early money. They put out like Lord Willing and they had to be told, no, you have to like have radio singles on there and stuff like that. But then at the same time, they're on Khalees Records, 702, Justin Timberlake, Backstreet Boys. Oh, yeah. Damn. All, all these kind of like real, real pop acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which... Which must have been a Pharrell thing. That must have been like Pharrell saying, look, this is going to give you some great exposure. You might not like it, but just go and do it, basically. You'll get paid. What does it matter? Yeah. So I'm really interested to know, like, were they really into that back then? Did they kind of reluctantly do it? Were they happy to do it? Like, I, I get the feeling that initially they probably weren't. But I think once you actually then start turning out big numbers, especially with like the Timberlake stuff, and those, you know, that song, you know, blew up and was massive. Exactly. I think then they maybe start to realize that, oh, actually, yeah, this is probably quite a good idea to to work with some of these people we're being sort of put in a room with. Yeah. And and, and if you think about it, just when I'm saying, when I, when I said that they were like kind of different, I think, I think being on a Justin Timberlake track also like give us such a huge contrast. Like you see this key, like, is a song like you immediately think about Michael Jackson and is a white kid that came out of a, a boy band and these two dark skin rappers like they are new well known from for rhyming and doing raps about crack cocaine on the same track like it's it's pretty amazing also you know? it is but it's a win win because like like we were saying for the clips it's massive exposure and we'll just take Justin Timberlake as the example that like Justin Timberlake album was so like hyped up and everyone was waiting for it and it obviously yeah. sold a ridiculous amount that it got them it got the clips a massive amount of exposure which yeah. you know good which is great for them but then on the flip side it's a massive win for Justin because it legitimizes him to you know a black audience because the mute the album itself was you know obviously mainly the Neptunes it was a very R&B kind of album that you wouldn't necessarily expect from a white boy from a boy band yeah. And, you know, a lot of the marketing was done to kind of, you know, black audiences, which is why I, th I think why kind of Pharrell was so involved in Timberland was so involved in the marketing side of it as well. Yeah. And doing appearances and things like that. So, you know, it legitimized him as well as an artist to different audiences. It's like, oh, he, no, he, he's not just a white, you know, this white boy from a, a cheesy boy band. He's actually, he must be quite credible. He must be quite cool because, like, the exactly. clips, they're, they're real. And they're working with him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I remember I met like a brother of of a friend of mine, and we and me and my friend we were talking about Justin Timberlake, and his brother was like a older guy, like ten years of difference, and he was like, "Oh, wh who are you talking about?" And we thought, like, "Oh, you're talking about Justin Timberlake." Like, hey, what 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 music he like? What, what what is his song like? Show me something. And then when put it on, like like I love you. 
and he was like, oh, I thought this kid was black. <laughs> but yeah, of course, like, like I love is super, super R&B, like with a rap future. So if you don't know, like when you listen to it, especially yeah, yeah. with the falsetto and everything, it's pretty much like black music. Yeah. I think if you, I think, you know, I vaguely remember back then, you know, a lot of um, interviews of people and reviews of the album and stuff like that. And when they're, talk, when they're talking to like people that had, weren't aware of who Justin Timberlake was, they weren't aware of NSYNC and stuff like that. There were a lot of people that listened to the album and just thought, yeah, he was some black kid. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, uh, that's what marketing and features can do for you. Oh yeah. 100%. Especially in the era, like, I, I think like 90 to 98 to until like 2005. Oh, I mean, until now, if, if I'm going to be honest, but especially that era, I think like a lot of white uh, artists, especially singers, like they were making a lot of features with black artists, especially because of that, because I mean, the music was popping and also because to legitimize the, the white artist as a cool person. Yeah, it's you can look at it sort of very cynically as well. Like, I, I'm sure, like, you know, I've seen a million interviews of Justin Timberlake and him growing up, he listened to Motown and all, all of his kind of um, inspirations are mainly sort of black artists and stuff like that. So while it does legitimize himself, it legitimize him in some people's eyes. Like, he has that background anyway. He doesn't necessarily need to do that. It just gets him out there more. And I think for a lot of music artists, that probably is the case. If you're really into music, you listen to a wide range of things. A lot of those artists are going to be non-white artists. Audiences don't necessarily know that. So that's where record labels then sort of step in and have to work their uh, magic again in air quotes <laughs> and link them up with you know other non-white artists to kind of break into that uh, that demographic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like like you say, like it's a win-win situation. It, yeah, it, in that instance, it definitely was. I can't think of any specifics where that sort of thing has gone horribly wrong, but I'm sure there. I'm sure there are examples out there where they've paired certain people. You know. Record labels have had a great idea to get this artist from this genre, this artist from this genre. They're from different backgrounds, put them together, and they haven't worked whatsoever. We're going to have to do some Googling and try and find some uh, some examples. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if you think about it, Clips is a, is a, is a duo, like a red duo, that is kind of difficult to sell to a large audience. Because, like I said, like, two dark skin rappers, allegedly drug dealers, you know, Rapping about cocaine, rapping about the streets, and you put it and put it on, I don't know, on, on the VMA side to side with Justin Timberlake. Like, it's genius. I think from being from Virginia as well makes a, a difference, you know. Oh, yeah. While there, while there are, you know, oh, a wow. lot of artists that have come out out of there, obviously, you know, Pharrell, Chad, Missy, Timberland, etc. It's not a music industry hotbed, is it? You know, it's not LA, it's not New York. It's not Miami. It's not Atlanta. You're kind of out there in a kind of separate world. And I, again, I remember remember interviews from like Pusher and Malice talking about how like back in the day they would have to always like drive up to New York like every week to like go and try and sell records and go to meetings and all that yeah. kind of thing. So yeah, it it was always like kind of different for me to to every time that I heard like oh well we are from Virginia or I, I don't know when Nelly came out. And he was like from Louisiana, right? St. Louis, Missouri. And everybody was, yeah. yeah. So everybody was talking about that thing so much, like, oh, they are they are not from the East Coast, West Coast. They are, I don't know. And I was, I, ne I never understood that. Like, oh man, but they are American artists. Like, why they are still talking about? And was just then, like, I don't know, maybe like in 2010, I in Brazil, like er, almost every artist, especially from hip hop or Brazilian funk. Like they always come came from Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo. So when a lot of artists started to come out from other cities, I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. Like, this, why this is a big deal? Yeah, I think with the U the US, it it matters more than most places just because of the the sheer size of the country and how different the cultures are in different areas. You know, like LA is a completely different culture to Atlanta, which is completely different to Chicago, which is completely different to Miami, yeah, which is completely different to like New Orleans or something. You know, they all vary so much, and yeah, you know, people from so many different backgrounds in different areas that like it really influences the music in a in a different way depending on specifically which city you're from. Even cities in the same state sometimes. 
Yeah, true, true, true. That. I mean, the United States is huge. Like, it's a lot of countries inside of a country. All right. Have we got anything else for this track? Yeah, I think we're done. Let's move on to a few bits of news. I'll leave the, the big one till right at the end. Okay. First bit of news. This is somewhere I, I saw this randomly. Pharrell is to collaborate with New Jeans Jap, who are a, a girl group, on their debut single, Supernatural. Oh, okay. I have no idea what... Mo- I know all the words in that sentence, but when you put them all together, I don't really know what it means. I don't know who <laughs> these people are. Yeah. I just saw a picture somewhere. I uh, thought, oh, okay, another girl group. Have you heard of these uh, these young ladies? No, never. And my my girlfriend, like, she know some Asian groups, and I asked her, and she was like, oh, I have no idea what, who are who are they. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. Well, it is their, it is going to be their debut single, so they've obviously not been around for very long. Yeah. I don't know when that's coming out. When it does, I'm sure we will we will mention it. But they must have some link to. I think you find with a lot of the Asian groups in sort of Japan and Korea, they the members move around between different groups and stuff, don't they? Oh, so okay. I don't know. Perhaps there's girls in this group that are from another big group, or so I, I don't know. I'm sure people out there listening to this are saying, "What a pair of fucking idiots we are!" But <laughs> we're just bringing you, bringing the news. We don't do the research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw the the. the... Some Korean groups like they have like multi national like international like, integrants like girls from from Japan from Australia even but, oh okay that's awesome yeah and they, they rotate them sometimes and they move to different groups and yeah yeah it's a whole different world over there yeah exactly next on the list a a BBC sneaker collaboration. We see these occasionally. This one didn't get much press because I think it's a China-only release. And this is the BBC. Uh, it's the Leaning Way of Wade 1 Retro, which is a mouthful to say. Collaboration with BBC. I saw this just because a follower that I know, Air Sweater, on um, Instagram copped a pair of these. I had no idea about them. I hadn't seen them previously, so I had to look them up. I found a site where they were selling them, I think like $350 or something. Wow. Yeah, not cheap. Not the um, <laughs> greatest looking sneaker in the world, to be perfectly honest, which is why I think they're a, a China only release. <laughs> they are a kind of, I don't know how to explain, they're like a black and white high top basketball shoe. Yep. There's like a some silver. On the side, it looks like a sort of metallic silver plate. <laughs> they're just, they're, they're strange looking. And in terms of the BBC, there's like the astronaut head on the tongue. And then there's the B logo on the sole. And then it says, uh, and there's Billionaire Boys Club on the back. Oh, and also the astronaut on the inside of the tongue as well. Okay. I don't know about the shoe. I don't think I've ever seen this shoe previously before. It looks like they've just taken a shoe and just stuck a few bbc logos onto it and it is not a great looking shoe and it's no surprise that i don't think it's going to get a a release kind of worldwide yeah i hope not <laughs> i still hated it i i i'm too like i'm only two in, on this one like it's a awful shoe i will yeah. say i'll try and put like it i'll try and put a picture in the show notes just so people can like see it as well or there'll be a link to go and look at the page that it's on because i think that's still up yeah, there's some things when i hate something I always think about like, oh, but let's look in other perspective. And when I thought about this shoe being like a kid shoe, like a, a shoe for kids, I'm like, oh, okay. If it was a, a, a shoe for kids, like it would be okay to look this like this. But as an adult, like oh, horrible. And it looks so dated also. Yes. And I don't know when the original kind of silhouette is from or when the original design is from. It's the way of way. So is it like a... Dwayne Wade sneaker. I don't know. Someone out there will have to tell me. But it's certainly not of a like a design aesthetic as we see like in the US and in Europe these days. Yeah, exactly. It does look like something that would fit in quite well and probably be quite popular in, in Asia just because they're a bit more kind of eclectic over there. There are a lot more different sort of silhouettes and designs they're into that don't necessarily work so well in Europe and the US. 
These seem to be sold out, I think, as well. It was oh, wow. a limited edition. Oh, actually, no, there might be some sizes available. Let me have a quick look. Let me see if I can find my size and see if I could buy a pair. Yeah, but... Okay, so it's... It's a limited edition, but it doesn't say of how many. And I can add them to the cart by the looks of it. So there probably will be some available still. So if you happen to look in the show notes and you do actually like these, then you know do feel free to go and order yourself a pair. I'm currently in the checkout because I'm interested to see if I get it shipped from China, how much it would possibly cost me. So it's $349 for the shoe. And then flat shipping, oh, a reasonable $29. Okay, less than 10%. Okay. $380, basically, to buy these. <laughs> I'd rather go and buy a couple of pairs of Jordans, if I'm honest. But Yeah, exactly. Like pairs, hard pairs. But it's just crazy that we, we, we didn't hear about this at all. I haven't... I haven't no, seen social again, media, I, like the guys talking about on the forum, nada. No, BBC haven't promoted this in any way. Uh, I haven't seen any other kind of posts about it apart from the the person I know that actually got a pair. I haven't seen like, I don't know, Hype Beast or one of those kinds of websites talking about a collaboration or the, the silhouette being released, mm. even as a kind of China exclusive. So yeah, no idea about it. Yeah, have you have you sent this to Dave? No, I have not. Yeah, man. Let's see what what he has to say about it. I'll tell you what. I'll send them to him right now yeah. as we're talking. I don't expect he'll reply straight back. Let me say thoughts? Question mark. <laughs> Paste. It normally takes him a day or two to reply back, but you never know. Yeah. I've sent them. <laughs> yeah. I don't imagine they're a pair he will be trying to get hold of. Oh, but maybe he will because of the collection and everything. Mm, yeah, he doesn't buy all of them. But, oh, one, that does remind me, actually. One thing I did notice this week, I will investigate some more. I won't say who it was that posted it, but they will potentially be a future guest on the show. But somebody did post a picture of some OG ice cream boutiques. They posted the brown and pink pair and the wow. green pair. Nice. Now, they did. A, they were doing a photo shoot and somebody was skating in them. So you think, okay, that's great. So they you know, dug a pair out of the archives or whatever. These two pairs were absolutely pristine, brand new. There was no color fade on them. They were literally out of a factory. Now, I have heard rumors the last couple of years. Don't play with me. They were... Yeah, I don't know whether I'll include this in the final edit, but I've heard rumours the last couple of years that they're going to re-release these. Oh, my God. They previously didn't because Reebok own the the patterns, they own the kind of silhouette and the rights to it and everything. And obviously Pharrell had a big falling out with Reebok, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, nothing happened. But then over the years, we've seen little bits and pieces. There was obviously a Reebok collab a couple of Reebok collabs the last few years. So things have seemingly sorted themselves out a little bit. Wow. Now these looked, these were identical to an original pair in terms of the silhouette, the stitching, the colouring, and everything like that. So I don't know if they've maybe just made some for this photo shoot. I don't know if they're actually going to. Yeah. Wow. Perhaps do some more of these, but yeah. I got the feeling these were very recently made because, yeah, the soles of them were just pristine white and clear, whereas if you own a pair of ice, original ice creams, you will know that the sole of them yellows a little bit over time. Yeah. Even if you keep them in a you know, perfect condition, you never wear them or anything like that, just from the, the air and things like that getting to them, they yellow a little bit. But these were like, yeah, just perfectly clear, pristine. That is awesome. Oh, I would love that. I do have I have a reply from uh, Mr. King of Creams himself. Okay. Let us know. He says, Steve, <laughs> is that a joke for $350? <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. He, he was thinking the same that, of what we were thinking. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that was, that's why I was curious about his opinion. I mean, Dave, We'll hate this. <laughs> uh, I will just say, want to send to you to get your reaction. <laughs> it was perfect. 
There we mm. go. I'll speak to him later on. Yes. All right, let's move on from these uh, these shoes and let's keep dreaming of new ice cream boutiques that were made in the same way the originals were made. Oh, yeah. that would be amazing. More yeah. Louis Vuitton releases. Uh, over yeah. the last weeks, we've seen a few bits and pieces come from Louis Vuitton. I can't remember if we spoke on the last one about the dog accessories they released. I've been debating getting a dog for a little while now, and you know this was going to be the year. So my credit card did not like the fact that Louis Vuitton and Pharrell released a lot of dog accessories. <laughs> not that I would, because I'm not that stupid, and I would get killed if, if I did go and buy any of them. Yeah. But one thing I may get in the coming weeks is there is a new Louis Vuitton and Pharrell fragrance yes. called Lovers based on the name that he's, you know, LV, I think it's ERS that he's using, he's been using since he's been at Louis Vuitton. I have no idea what this smells like. It gets released next week, I think. So we're recording this on Tuesday, the 11th of June. I did set myself a reminder to actually go and find it. It's released, yeah, on the 19th. So just over a week's time. Yeah. I will pop to the local Louis Vuitton store on the 19th and see um, see what it smells like. Nice. If it is nice, I may I may treat myself and get one. But as with everything Louis Vuitton, their fragrances, fragrances are horrifically expensive. So Ooh. how much? It's got to smell really nice. They range, <laughs> I think they do some of their more basic ones for around 200, 250. But then they also go up to like more expensive than that. I think some of their higher end are like four to 600. So Damn. I'm hoping this is at the lower end and it's a bit more kind of commercially available. So, you know, it's not really, it's not like limited or anything. I'll go see what it's like if it's, at the lower end of that scale, then I may invest in a bottle. But if you are into your fragrances and you want to smell like Pharrell, <laughs> then you can... Because I'm sure that's all he wears now. Uh, you can pick this up, yeah, from the 19th of June at your local Louis Vuitton store. I just imagine, like, does Pharrell use his own fra fragrance? I imagine he probably would. I guess it's like with the clothes, you know, he's probably, he's got oh, yeah. a mixture. He's probably got a, bun a bunch of fragrances that he likes, that he uses from other brands. But I'm sure the, the Louis Vuitton stuff, you know, the prototypes in the final versions are in his fragrance rotation. It just mis makes me think about that time that he launched the, the liquor. I think it was called Cream with, with a Q. Cream, yeah. <laughs> What a dark time on his because I remember like Pharrell trying to sell that. He was like, No, because I never like alcohol that much. But this is like a mixture like with a sweet drink and everything. And I think like, maybe yeah. like after six months, like the deal was off, like he was already in a feud with the guys that did the drink. Like, oh my god, what a mess. <laughs> it's a fucking liqueur. It's what like eighty year olds drink. It's like Yeah. Ain't nobody going to a bar, bar and ordering a cream liqueur. It's like, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. And man. then also, I think, yeah, around that time, yeah, he's also done his, his other fragrance collaborations as well with like, uh, there's con the, he's had a couple con of Comme des Garçons, hasn't he, where Cause has done the, the bottles in the packaging. Oh, that, that, that is iconic, especially for, I think for us, like fans, like Looking, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't smell good though. Oh, okay. Oh, I think you. There was told that, me that one, yeah. And there's, I'm trying to think. There was another one as well. Can't think what it was now, but yeah, his previous ventures into um, fragrances have not been successes. There's a lot of that stuff still around that you, you can still buy it now, years later. Yeah. But I would like to think Louis Vuitton has an amazing fragrance department or perfume department because they obviously already make really high end fragrances for men and women. So hopefully he's been working very closely with them and giving his input and explaining what he likes and what he doesn't like. And um, hopefully, yeah, it turns out how he imagined and hopefully it's a good one. Yeah, nice. Let's see. But let's get on to the big news of the week and maybe of the year. Oh, yeah. Piece by piece in cinemas, 11th of October. Yeah. Now, we've heard rumours and things about this for a little while about the fact he was working on a lego based movie we didn't have much more information other than that and then suddenly last week the trailer dropped with some absolutely iconic scenes in it yeah it looks like 
it has the potential to be absolutely amazing. 100%. And I'm not going to lie, the first time that I heard about this movie, I was like, man, this is going to be trash. <laughs> 100 yeah. percent like i was like oh my god why like oh, okay and, and i was just hoping like, it might be like 40 minutes and everybody's going to forget about it and that's it but just the trailer itself like is amazing the trailer has like shots from all the iconic music videos and, and stuff like that and they've worked on all like the outfits he was wearing there's all like the bbc outfits and other things that he's been wearing throughout the years. They've got it sort of down to a T. It looks really good. Yeah. Man. Obviously, he he's voicing himself, and he then has lots of other, you know, all of the people he's worked with, or a lot of the people he's worked with over the years are also voicing themselves. So, you know, Jay-Z is in there. It's got to be something pretty good to convince Jay-Z to go and do a voiceover Bro, for yes. a Lego character. I mean, it's Lego. So it's a pretty huge brand, so that helps. That does help, but at the same time, like when you know, we know how picky Jay Z is. Oh yeah, yeah, with what with what he works on and who he works with and what he gets involved in. And these days, he's very much a hands off kind of person. So for him to go, yeah, to be convinced to go into a studio and do a voiceover for a Lego movie. I think he's pretty big. Gwen Stefani, we saw in there. Snoop Dogg, we saw in there. I think I might be wrong. I've got a feeling Kendrick Lamar did something. Justin Timberlake Justin is in Timberlake. there. Yeah. Like this should be this should be really, really good. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. And the same day that the trailer came out, at night I was thinking, oh, it can be so huge because it's going to be a part of the it's not just look Pharrell's life history, but it's also like a part of hip hop on Legos. Like it can be amazing because I think it, it can be like one of those things like that Lego is like well known for doing like is one of those things that it can be like the first one of a lot. Mm -hmm. All we know like since Snoop is such a charismatic figure like oh let's do like Snoop after oh I don't know Jay Z Beyonce. And... I don't know if Lego want to go down the attempted murder route and do scenes in court cases. Yeah. Might be a bit too much for their brand, <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, Snoopy always has a a pass for some reason. <laughs> mm, well, I, I'd like to see you argue that with a Lego marketing executive. Yeah, I don't think Sto even Snoop would get that pass. But <laughs> but yeah, that, this should be really interesting. It looks really well produced from what I've seen. What we see in the the trailer as well. Yeah, it's got all the kind of characters you'd want in there. And by characters, I mean real people that are, you know, now Lego minifigures. It's going to be interesting to see kind of what story it actually tells and how that works. Because like I say, in the trailer, we see a lot of clips from music videos. So is it going to focus on that? Is there going to be some kind of, there must be some kind of narrative, some kind of story that flows through it. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they tie in all those, you know, music videos and albums and collaborations and things like that into whatever the story is going to be. Oh, yeah. It's going to be amazing. And I think for us, like, oh, man, it's going to be awesome. And I think the, the, the trailer, I think we got really excited about the trailer because you have to think about it, it's one of our idols. And it's a story that we know pretty much. Like, we are, we are, are watching Pharrell closely for almost 20 years. No, for 20 years already. So, and see that on Lego, that is also part of our lives and part of our childhood. It's just like, oh my God, this looks perfect. Too good to be. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know a few people that work at Lego and they work in quite senior positions at Lego uh, here in Europe. And I haven't asked them yet, but at some point soon, I'm going to start pestering them and uh, asking because like every Lego movie has merchandise. Yeah, There has yeah. to be merchandise of some kind. So yeah. I'm so ready. I don't expect there's going to be like a big uh, Lego set of any of some kind, but there's going to be minifigures. There's going to be something. You know? Oh, yeah. Man, so I'm imagine? really, Jesus. I'm really interested to see what the merchandise will be that goes with this, uh, and if I can get my hands on some of it as well. So yeah. I'll be asking them soon and trying to find out some some details. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I was talking uh, with a cousin of mine, and he's not even a Pharrell fan like we are, and, and he was like, 
oh, this can be like the same thing that, what is the name of, uh, I forgot about the name of the, Michael Jordan's doc, the, the less, the less something. Oh, the documentary, The Last Dance, yeah. Yeah, The Last Dance, like, it can be The Last Dance for Pharrell Williams. And I'm like, oh, it can be. Like, because, it's, because since it's like a huge company like Lego, they did a whole movie about his life. Like it can be like a lot of people is going to be like, "Oh my god!" So he did all these things. Like it can be pretty amazing for him. What I'm interested in is like how they market it as well, because obviously it's gonna. I think the likes of Happy and songs like that are gonna feature very heavily in it, and probably very heavily in the marketing to kind of get that younger generation interested in who he is and the story. And they're like, oh, it's the guy from Happy. Oh, oh yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah but then yeah, at the same time, exactly. they want to be trying to market it to you know, people like us. So how are they going to like, how are they going to do that? What are they going to utilize there to yeah. get the likes of us to go to a cinema? To be fair, I think we're going to go anyway, but yeah. they still need to do something. So it'll be really interesting to see how they do that. Yeah. I just hope that Lego, when Lego is supposed to put it out some sets, about from the movie or from forever or whatever. I just hope they don't do some, uh, I don't know, limited edition type of thing. Like just put it out. I think it, it will be. Yeah, man, I, I hate this. I'm already afraid about this. Fuck. This is one of those things where as a movie, I think it will do quite well because it's Lego, because it's him, yeah. because they can market to different generations. But it's not the sort of thing where the merchandise is going to sell particularly well. Like I say, you can't build... It's not like, I don't know, Harry Potter or something where you can build a a, a castle from Harry Potter. I don't, I don't know if there are castles in Harry Potter. I've never watched it, but, you know, mm-hmm. you've got a set, you've got a backdrop, you've got an area that's from the book or from the movie that you can replicate in Lego. Like, what are you going to do with Pharrell? Are you going to... Here's the set to the music video. Can I have it like that? Like, what? Yeah, like, exactly. it, do- it doesn't work, you know? Yeah. But what I hope and think they will do is lots of minifigures of the different people involved. So I can imagine there's going to be a set of like five of Pharrell with him in different outfits, different clothing from different times. Then you might get a set of other people that are in the movie. So there might be a little Jay-Z, a little Gwen Stefani, a little Snoop Dogg. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. yeah. Again, I think because they're, they're not going to sell massive amounts, I think they probably would be quite limited. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, but that makes a lot of sense. Man. That that can work out pretty good for them. But I can't wait, man. And like, I just want like the the fronting set with the skateboard ramp. Like, oh my, just do that. Yeah, that would be amazing to have. Wow. Like, and when I saw on the on the video, I was like, oh man, I need this. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. I know. I did like as soon as I shared that post. And I think you shared it as well. Copy the thing of the video. Your better half messaged me straight away it was like oh my god you two 40 year old idiots gonna go to the cinema and watch a lego movie i was like yeah 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 man oh she knows us well grown ass man like getting emotional about like some lego trailer (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i know yeah yeah like james like james and some other friend of my uh, Jonathan, I don't know if you know him, and they both messaged me, man, we have to see this movie together. And we're like, yeah, man, let's hold hands see, and go to the cinema like singing happy together. <laughs> it would be amazing. <laughs> we're all gonna we're gonna share some popcorn and oh yeah, <laughs> epic. We should try and arrange something because it is October, so we have got a little oh, while yeah. to you know oh, yeah. try and sort something out maybe. Oh okay, okay, I'm down. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what we can do. <laughs> I'll be seeing. I'll be seeing James in a few weeks in London, anyway. So we will. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, we'll try and have a discussion and see what we can plan out. Maybe that would be quite good. Nice. Good. Cool. Let's do that. All right. I think we're about to wrap it up. The one thing no. I was going to ask is no. Go on. What no, I just uh, before we wrap it up, like I just have to sit, talk about like the the experience that it was for me to see clips live oh i completely forgot about that yes yeah let's go <laughs> yes yeah man like, it was pretty amazing like just to to tell from the beginning but when i first heard that clips was would be performing primavera sound the first thing that i thought was like oh i have to to revisit the whole 
catalog to 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 listen to all the music and try to to think what set list they they are going to do and because I have to to know all the lyrics because I don't know I feel like it, it was such a bold move from the clips to play in a festival in Barcelona like the clips in Barcelona like what are you talking about and and I, in my mind I was like oh I have to know the lyrics because I know it's going to be like a few amount of of fans in there so just to be a part of the the day one fans in the crowd just to so I can give back you know and it was exactly what happened I I I I couldn't uh um what is the the word when you when you keep everything in your mind like because I uh, I forgot the word when you like you you study something and you keep everything on your mind. What is the word for that? Memorize. Yeah, memorize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Such a stupid word. Yeah. So I couldn't memorize all the songs that I wanted, but I memorized some parts of the 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 verses and everything. I'm like, oh man, okay, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And oh man, it was so amazing. Like they started with Popular Demand. That is one of my favorite Pusha T verses of all time. And I was like, oh, man, so good. And I was, like, singing word, word by word because I th from that song, I only know Pusha's verse. <laughs> it's a shame, but because Clip, uh, Malice's uh, verse is pretty awesome. I know some beats, but I don't know everything. And the, the set list was amazing. They played, like, that one. The, the one that I was surprised that, I mean, there were a few ones that was I was surprised, but the the one that I was most surprised, I think, was I'm Good. That's why it's one of the reasons that I pick up I'm Good for, for this week. Because, and they played at the end of the of their set. And because they, they when they finished grinding, and I was like, okay, that's the, that's the end. I was already like, oh, okay, I know the set list. Like, oh, let's go. Like, it's finished. And they were still on the stage, and they started to play I'm Good. Like, oh, my God, that's such a treat. You know, and it made sense because it's such a feel good song. They are in Barcelona in a festival. It's so, perfect okay. for that. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. And it's perfect ending. And the song was in my mind for like two hours after. I, we were at other, like other stages seeing other artists. And I was still like with I'm good in my mind. Yeah. And, but it was pretty awesome, man. Like the guys, like they perform, like from the the videos that I remember seeing them performing live, they were exactly the same. I mean, of course, because the energy from the crowd was not like it was in the United States in two thousand five. But I, I I heard a lot of people singing some songs, like Pusha getting excited about like singing the song with some other people from the crowd so it was pretty amazing uh, to see that and when they uh, and i was thinking to go to with the nrd head and i was like oh i don't know the, all those songs so it's gonna to be a lot of pressure for me so i'm not gonna do that <laughs> you know because it's a pretty re recognizable head so no i'm yeah. not gonna do that but i throw some star trek signs to, to uh, up just to see if the guys notice or throw the the sign back I don't know if they they notice it, but but yeah. What else? Um, oh, so in when they started to perform hard, then is one of uh, I think my easily top five clip songs that I my favorite top uh, one of my favorite uh, clip songs, and I started to sing and rapping with them. I don't know, and exactly when it comes to to Pharrell part. On, on Pusha's verse, he started to looking at me and he started to imagine the Rolls Royce Russian. And he was like pretty <laughs> impressive with me. So we have that moment. And Juliana, like she was filming. So she got just the end of it, but it was pretty amazing for me. And I got the chills and everything just to, to think about it. Because when we when we ended the, the verse together, we both at the same time salute ourselves like this. And I was like, oh my God. And he smiled, like, he smiled uh, 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 even more when he saw that. Like, oh, that, that was pretty amazing to see. And there was some part also on, uh, on Wamp Wamp that Malice came over and we, like, 
we exchange uh, some looks and rhyming like back to back to to each other it was pretty cool but that moment with push i was like oh my god like i'm done like what else i have to do in this life you know like i felt like so complete and the and that's why i i started this talking about this when i first heard it about then coming to here i was like oh i have to represent you know i have to be uh like I had to represent for for us, for for people from the forum, from people from the Star Trek music forum days, you know. So I felt so like I felt like I this I don't know, man. I I felt like I saved lives, you know. Like oh, I felt so good. <laughs> like I I haven't felt that good for so many times, and I'm like oh man, I feel I felt like I I accomplished so many things right now, just to having that moment with Push and and malice and after like i've been a fan of this guy for since 2004 2005 so after 20 years just seeing those guys and i i, I malice was the first one to 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 do a post about it and he even liked my comment and i was like thanking him like oh thank you for coming like i waited for this for 20 years so it was amazing to see you guys perform such an energetic way so yeah, man, it was pretty good. But one 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 fun thing that happened that I noticed that when they were performing, I'm good. Oh, actually, the other thing, like they they performed it when the last time. So okay, they did do it. Yeah, they did do it. And when when it started, I was like, oh, push. Got over it then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like man, I'm such an adult now. Like, look at him. Like just letting that this pass by. <laughs> so it it was a pretty cool. Uh, moment also because I heard a lot of people singing, especially the the first verse and the hook. So like, oh okay, some people here know they shit. And so back in show, I'm good. Why they were performing? Pusha were looking to Malice, and Malice didn't look like good. Like he was upset. Like he, I feel like oh, he's an obligation for him. But but this is how I felt because I didn't understand because he was looking to Malice and Malice was like nodding his hand like his head like this and and, and push was smiling at him like oh let's just do this and get and, yeah. and it was pretty good i mean i think what i mean i think i was one of the only ones singing because i uh oh one one cool thing that happened and that was one of the things that made me think about you it was like a guy that was in front of us he was with his son and his son i think was 16 and I and he was insane, like he was drunk. He was probably drunk out of his mind, but he was like pretty excited, pretty happy. And then he was saying all the time, "This is my kid. This is my son. Like I bring him because you have to see this because this is awesome." <laughs> and like oh, man, that's so awesome of you, like passing by, like your love for the class, and and you are here now, like with your kid. And man, man, I'm pretty happy. And there was one time that he was like, you want some Coke? <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's the clips. We have to do it. <laughs> and I was like, no, man, think I'm good. Like, I'm not heavy here, but it's coming. You're like, okay, man, chill. <laughs> and his, his kid was kind of like embarrassed. Like, man, dad, you're doing too much. So chill a little yeah. bit. Fo focus on the music in your kid. <laughs> just like, yeah. It's all you need. It's all you need. Yeah, yeah. But it was pretty cool to see that moment, man. They're just like a dad and a son, like seeing a, a group that he loved and he probably put his kid on. And I mean, that happened with a lot of other bands. But I think for me, besides you, that of course your uh, your little one, like that, that is not a little one anymore, uh, knows a lot. Yeah, exactly. So Bessie knows a, a lot about Pharrell, I, I would imagine. So besides you, I never seen anybody doing that, like showing his kid and saying, like, oh, he also a fan of of the clips or Pharrell or whatever. And it was pretty amazing, man, to see that. Like, oh, man, so, so special. Man, I'm so glad it was a good show, and I'm so glad you had a good time. Man. I'm, yeah. I'm really hoping they um, do some more touring. I've been keeping an eye on like the festivals here. I've bought a ticket for 
Flow Festival, which is like the biggest one here in the summer. The lineup is pretty awful so far. I was hoping that the clips might throw a few kind of, you know, late summer dates in there maybe. Uh, and I'm also hoping the fact that they are back out there doing festivals and shows occasionally now might mean that, you know, we're that little bit closer to an album coming out yeah. and then a proper tour happening. Yeah, exactly. And uh, because I remember, like, I bought the tickets and I remember telling you, like, oh, the Clips is coming to Spain. And I, I told James, I told some of the guys from the forum. And I totally forgot about it. I totally forgot. And when I, we started to talk about Primavera Sounds, me, he, Julian, and I, and I was like, oh, let's see what other cities they are performing. Because I was like, oh, it's the Clips. Like, I have to see, like, at least two twice. Like, one will be amazing, but if I can, if I will be able to see them like both, like oh, twice, I'm like oh, let's do it. And I was like, oh, they just had Primavera sound. Like it was so strange to me, especially because I remember like hearing something like they were trying to to manage like a, a, a Euro tour or even a US tour because of the the, the single that they did in in the Louis Vuitton uh, yeah. show. And I was like, oh, I was so like, oh, why? Like, they just are just doing here. So I don't know if they didn't want to or, I don't know, they failed to, not fail, but they didn't come through with a with a business pr proposition to them because I always, I know that some companies sometimes, like, they, they come as the biggest brand from, from a, for a tour or something to, to get their venues and everything. I don't yeah. know what happened there, but yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, in this instance, they probably got a lot of money thrown at them for the for the one show. I get the feeling because they only did the one and they haven't, don't, or don't seem to have signed up for any more in the summer that somebody that's marketing that festival or working in a senior position maybe worked with them directly previously, maybe at their label or, you know, directly with them in some capacity. So there was a good kind of way into straight to them and just maybe try and convince them to do it. And of course, you know, the money's got to be right for both of them to fly over there and do it. I saw they did have like what seemed like a couple of days off as well. So they got to see some sights and enjoy themselves as well, which was undoubtedly all paid for and you know they were looked after pretty well yeah I'm, I'm still kind of holding out hope that they magically appear in so, you know some more festivals during the summer or if we don't get that we at least get like an album after yeah. the summer and another tour at some point yeah yeah hopefully i would love to see those guys like again especially because i was so mesmerized because they were performing with almost no uh backtracks is, yeah, this whole they almost none like just on on some hooks, but that was it. And the voice was impeccable, and the energy was also pretty good. And I was like, oh man, I would love to see these guys like perform again, just because they still performing in a very good quality. Yeah, I'm just looking at my phone quickly to see when it was when I went to see them. 2007, Jesus. I saw them. But I mean, yeah, hell had no fury, right? Yeah, oh, it was it was a great show and a great time to see them. Yeah, oh, yeah. but I would like to see <laughs> a more modern show as well. Yeah, how many times you 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 saw them? The clips only once. Oh, okay. I think I've seen Pusher separately. I think I can't remember now. I'm pretty sure yeah, I've seen a clip what, clips once, Pusher separately once somewhere. Again, it might have been at a festival, but that's it with them. Oh, okay. Oh, um, so yeah, so I, I would really like to see them again. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I, I remember Juliana telling me like, "Oh, you, what about Steve? Like, he didn't mention that he wants to come or or anything." And I was like, "Oh, I think we forgot to talk about about it more." But and I was like, "But he he saw them in two thousand six, two thousand seven, so it was one of the best moments to see the clips live." So fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> He was there when it was cool to be there. Yeah, exactly. Not like it is, yeah. Not, not a latecomer in 2024. But it's one of the reasons that I, I got so... Uh, I was so happy, and I still am. Like, every time that I think about it, I feel so happy. Just because they perform in a very high level, like it was 2005, 2007. Without the angriness, but yeah, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I, I like about when I 
see them do the odd show these days, whether it's together or just Pusher himself or whatever, like they still put the effort in. They could easily show up to that festival and like be like, oh God, there's some songs here we don't really want to do. And like, oh, they've given us a load of money. We'll just fucking show up and just like, you know, wander around on stage for half hour, then fuck off and get in a jet and go back yeah. home basically. But but it sounds like they really kind of made the effort and it was a, a really, really good show. Yeah, it was. And I, uh, a, day, a day before I saw Freddie Gibbs with Madlib. It was pretty cool also. But I think, I mean, it was good, but I saw, like, I saw other, like, Freddie Gibbs performance on, on YouTube or whatever, and I saw him doing better, you know? But I think, like, maybe the crowd, like, I think he was, like, expecting more from the crowd, and... Probably, I think, like, Freddie Gibbs is one of those where he does, like, festival tours every single year, pretty much. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a he was here last summer. I'm pretty sure he's here again this summer. Um he just seems to kind of constantly do festivals and, and stuff like that. So I can imagine that when you're on your hundredth festival or something, if the crowd isn't quite with you, it can be, you know, that much harder to really get into it and really do it. Yeah, exactly. Especially because of the ego, right? Like you expecting to be like oh everybody here knows me everybody's going to see every lyric and when it's not the the thing that you're expecting your ego just like disappears totally so you got hurt but it was a good yeah. it was a good performance i'm not gonna lie i just felt like i i saw him performing live way better on some other videos that i saw but and it was and that and when i saw the his performance i was like oh it can happen the same thing with the clips because it, I was so sure that almost anyone would will know the clips. But I mean, I forgot. I, I have to think about. You have to think about like Pusha T is a huge rapper, and yeah. yeah, it's not like Kendrick or Drake, but it's still he's a very well known rapper. So of course, like, and I and while we we were in in in, in the concert in the show seeing them. They perform. I was thinking, oh, but you saw Pusha T last 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 year, and you saw like you a lot of people was like singing word word for word, like screaming the, the the lyrics. So of course he Pusha T at itself like he's going to to bring a lot of fans to here. So yeah, it was pretty cool, man. Nice man. Glad you had a brilliant time, and I am despite having seen them in their heyday in two thousand and seven, I am very very jealous. Yeah. Let's hope uh, they come back to, to on tour. Yeah, I'm world. sure they will. I'm yeah. sure we've got plenty of clip stuff to look forward to. Yeah, of course. All right. On that note, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> In which case, you can find all of the links to the things we've talked about uh, amongst the show notes, which you can find in your podcast player of choice, but you can also find it over on the website at theothers.net. You can also head over there if you'd like to buy some nice Others merchandise. I've added some more bits and pieces today. So you can fill your wardrobe and get ready for the summer. Nice. You can find me at Steve R. Penny pretty much everywhere online. And Rafa, where can people find yourself? Yeah, people can find me on Instagram as Rafito underline Zurk. And also... Uh, we say this uh, a bunch of times here, but uh, I do uh, sneaker posters, like pretty cool ones. So if you're looking to decorate your home, your house, your sneaker room, like hit me up on uh, at sneak.art.l, E-L at the end. And that's it. Nice one. Thank you again for this. Thank you for listening. Thanks, and man. we'll speak to you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah, man. Bye-bye. See ya.